Hello everybody, welcome to the broadcast today. As you can see, our title is Why Prayer is Necessary for National Transformation. <laughs> That's a great title. And one of the reasons I definitely wanted to hammer this one was because, you know, we're talking a lot in this series about, uh, you know, what needs to be added to prayer. And prayer alone is not enough. And a person can begin to think that prayer is sort of on the low end of the totem pole of of what God requires for a nation to be changed. And, and I want to help with this a little bit to understand because you might ask, well, what then is the role of prayer? If we've been praying, 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 and there's no change in the country as yet, what is the role of prayer when it comes to national transformation? Well, first of all, there's a really good biblical uh, <clears throat> precedence and proof for praying to God to change the nation. That That's bottom line. We just see it in Scripture. You know, and we'll use that scripture for the Lord to come down and heal our land. The power in that scripture, when it says, uh, you know, if you will turn from your wicked ways and you cry out to me, then I will hear from heaven and all of that. The key there is not that you held a prayer meeting. The key there is that you repented of sin. Sin is actually, and iniquity is what actually brings curses to nations. It's sin that actually holds nations back from being transformed and the kingdom of God coming to your nation. And so the prayer part there has to do a lot with repentance. And, and that's really important. And one of, you know, one of the powers behind that <coughs> is the gathering of a critical mass to repent for the sins of the church and repent for the sins of the people in the land. But there's actually a higher level that is very effective, and that's when key gatekeepers, so, <coughs> excuse me, people that have authority, when they repent, when they uh, invite God into the land, they may even pray a short prayer like, God, we give our nation over to you, or they may call a day of prayer or a week of prayer. That is highly powerful because they are the gatekeepers and those in authority over the land and God respects that and he moves. Another aspect of prayer that's very powerful when it comes to national transformation is the power of agreement and critical mass. <laughs> That's where a cry ascends to heaven and there's a critical mass that is praying and God hears from heaven and he's moved by the cry of the people. The Bible lays out several types of cries that go up to heaven that God responded to. There's the cry of sin, where sin is so rampant and so over the top extreme globally that God comes in and brings judgment or moves in some way. Uh, to put an end to it. Then there's the cry of prayer, where there's a critical mass that's crying out to God for him to move. We see this in Israel uh, when they were in bondage in Egypt for 400 years. But take special note of this, that they were actually in bondage crying out to God for 400 years. 400 years. <laughs> you know, when we read in the Bible about God responding to the cry of the people and he hears and comes down and, and breaks in and does an exception in breaking into the realm where the sons of man have responsibility and are in charge, that's something that is over such a duration of time and such a cry that that it's it's almost like the exception to the rule. And that's why we don't see our nations already given over to God by now, even though we've got churches praying. We've been praying for a long time. Uh, you know, there are nations that gather together and have incredible prayer meetings that pray better than we do, if you could use the term better as Canadians. Uh, but there are, are, are people that pray, but yet the nation hasn't been changed. You've got to take note of this. It's simply not enough to go to the prayer meeting, gather believers together, and then walk away and say, we prayed, we fasted, now everything has changed. It just simply is not so, and we've seen it that way. The gathering and praying and the critical mass over a period of time praying and interceding is sort of like the exception to the rule and isn't always effective. And I know that doesn't 
tickle our religious funny bone to hear that, but if you look at the reality and the results, it's just not always effective. There's a reason for that, because prayer must be coupled with something. You see, God operates in legalities, and I won't go too much into detail, but the Bible simply says the heavens are the Lord's, the earth has been given to the sons of men. So when we are so overwhelmed that we are no longer, you know, we're struggling to manage what's been given to us, there are times where it's of biblical precedence to cry out to God and say, God, break into our dimension, do what we cannot do. We surrender, we need your help, you know, all of that. That's when it, it actually is appropriate to do that. But in a general sense, as far as how this thing is to work, we as the church are called to be the managers on the earth, uh, executing God's will as he would if he was in our shoes. Therefore, prayer for the nation must, 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 must be uh, accompanied by or even eclipsed by tangible strategic action in that nation. <laughs> Practical, tangible action. That's what really gets that prayer to bring about results. So why pray for the nation? What is the power of prayer, especially as of late, as it pertains to national transformation, transformation in our country? You know, this COVID virus has really brought something to the surface. And it's exciting today to say that because of the virus and this challenge that we faced globally, we have never actually been at a place where we have seen more prayer globally. We have never seen so many people from so many different streams of, of Christianity coming together as one, laying down agendas, coming together in true unity and praying together. These Zoom calls with a thousand plus pastors, 4,000, 5,000 leaders gathering together, believers gathering together. Why is that powerful when it comes to national transformation? The reason is this. It causes us to lay down our agendas and have a bigger goal in mind. It, it allows us to come together in genuine unity, not uniformity, not checking out the prayer meeting, going to be on there with some other people, but genuine unity is found within prayer when you pray for the nation. And the Bible clearly states that where there is that level of unity, there is a blessing, and it paints an illustration of the oil <clears throat> running down the head and the beard. It paints a picture of a blessing and anointing and God's glory covering that nation. I mean, that is powerful. That's a good reason to come together in prayer for unity's sake. Another good reason, though, to come together and pray, uh, praying for the nation, is it actually raises issues. It makes the church more aware of what the issues really are, so that we can inject our faith into not only praying about it, but actually going out beyond the four walls and bringing tangible, organized acts of influence in that society. So when we pray for the nation, and we saw a lot of that in our recent uh, prayer gatherings, our national prayer gatherings in Canada that have been going on for years and years, uh, you know what those do? We, we, we don't always see an immediate effect. Uh, we haven't always seen change. There actually hasn't been so much at all really that has changed since then as far as the nation being saved. But what we have seen is the church woken up. It awakened the church. It awakened the church to unity. Those prayer meetings awakened the church to greater relationship of the church coming together. And it also made the church aware of the issues and how to get involved in seeing change in the nation. It operated like a fuel. It operated like a motivator. It operated to propel people into their callings, uh, to propel people to be into compassion, to be moved by compassion at the situation in the land. Anytime the people of God gather in unity, we can expect something from it. And you might say, well, not so much came from that and all of, well, we don't always know. We haven't seen long term yet. And so I'm of the belief that more prayer is good prayer. And I know that tr national transformation requires this. 
The last aspect I'd like to highlight here in the area of why prayer is so important as it pertains to national transformation is the area of warfare. Now, you just cannot deal with spiritual strongholds and strong men and principalities over nations without prayer. You can't just smile them away. The government's not going to get rid of them. They have held nations in place. These principalities of darkness have held nations in place for centuries and even longer, and they don't want to let go. And that's why you need the prayer of the righteous. You need fervent prayer. You need to use all your spiritual weapons. Ephesians says, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Talk about national transformation. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities of darkness that hold nations in bondage. I did a series on this recently, and I may... I may include some of those videos in our in our reformation campaign here but these were not prayer meetings of just protocoling and honoring each other a lot of worship with the latest christian band uh, uh, some people sharing their heart for the nation this kind of warfare prayer is more particular than that and i won't go into teaching on it in this session but this level of warfare prayer that deals with principalities of darkness can be accomplished in corporate prayer meetings it can and this level of warfare prayer can actually begin to pry back the tentacles, if you can picture that way, <laughs> of a principality, and they can lose their grip on the nation until one kingdom is displaced and another kingdom rushes in. And you know what kingdom that is. It's the kingdom of God. And suddenly people are, are, are wanting to come to Jesus. And the blinders have been lifted off their eyes. Suddenly the economy uh, changes and begins to rise. The nation begins to prosper because righteousness uh, righteousness exalts and lifts up a nation. Change begins to happen when the strong man or principality is removed. The challenge for Canadians, though, is even when you do dethrone a demonic principality because you prayed enough and you hit the target through intercession, you've got to go then and occupy territory. One kingdom has been removed. It's not enough to say, now God, you come in and be the CEO. You come in and be the trustee and the teacher in the school system. No, God is saying, you now go in there and occupy key gatekeeper positions. You go in and be an influence for the kingdom of God. You bring the kingdom of God. So it's never just prayer for the nation. <laughs> it's not prayer for discipleship. Uh, it's not prayer for the harvest. It's prayer to equip and send laborers into the harvest to do it themselves. It is, it is not prayer for God to disciple them. You're called to disciple them. So it's prayer for wisdom and ideas and greater efficiency in handling a harvest that is ripe and ready right now. You see the, the, the dual responsibility, the dual partnership between God and man? <laughs> Hallelujah! I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time. God bless.